Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our clinical biochemistry playlist. In the last video, we talked about lactose intolerance or lactase deficiency. Today, we'll talk about yet another disease of lactose metabolism known as galactosemia. There are two types of galactosemia, mild galactosemia and the classic severe galactosemia due to different deficiencies in two different enzymes. Classic galactosemia is a contraindication to breastfeeding. A baby with galactosemia should not be breastfed. Moreover, this severe classic galactosemia increases the risk of gram-negative bacterial sepsis. In the first video in this playlist, we talked about sorbitol, diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, diabetic neuropathy, and cataracts. Then we talked about why I have reducing sugars in my urine and dose intolerance. Today we're talking galactosemia. I have three biochemistry playlists on the channel. The first one is about the basics and then the one called new is very comprehensive. This one is very clinical. Where is lactose please? Lactose is here. It's a carbohydrate. It's a disaccharide. How do I digest lactose? Well, in order for you to digest lactose into galactose and glucose, you need an enzyme known as lactase. So lactose, if it ends in ose, it's usually a sugar, it's a hexose sugar made of six carbons. And if it ends in ace, it's usually an enzyme. So lactase is an enzyme that digests lactose into glucose and galactose. Lactose is here. It's a hexose sugar with six carbon atoms. Why do we call them carbohydrates, by the way? Because they are hydrated carbons. So here is lactose. It's a disaccharide. Thanks to lactase, it will give us two monosaccharides. One is glucose, the other is galactose. And just like glucose can be reduced into sorbitol, galactose can also be reduced into galactitol. These are polyols, i.e. sugar alcohols. If it ends in OL, it's an alcohol. Is alcohol water soluble or lipid soluble? Water soluble, of course. That's why some people can drink it. And this sorbitol or galactitol are osmotically active. They can attract water. Oh, if I attract water to my clear lens, it becometh unclear, called cataract. Probably the most common eye disease ever. Well, maybe the only thing more common will be errors of refraction, if you can consider this a disease. What did sorbitol do? Well, diabetic patients had too much glucose, too much sorbitol, osmotically active, boom, pull water into the lens, cataract, pull water into the nerve, damage it, peripheral neuropathy, pull water into the pericytes in my retina, retinopathy. How about galactitol, which comes from galactose, which comes from lactose? It can also do the same thing. So let's talk about lactose metabolism. Here is lactose, the sugar found in milk and dairy products. By lactase enzyme, it gets digested into glucose and galactose. By galactokinase, the enzyme that adds a phosphate, galactose becomes galactose 1-phosphate. Where did you get that phosphate from? From ATP, adenosine triphosphate. When you take one phosphate from adenosine triphosphate, it becometh adenosine diphosphate. Where did you attach the phosphate? To the first carbon of the hexose sugar. Then, thanks to an enzyme known as galactose 1-phosphateuridyl transferase, look at this uridyl transferase, and you end up with glucose 1-phosphate. So we converted the galactose into its isomer glucose, i.e. You can think of this enzyme as an isomerase. And epimerase is a subtype of isomerases, enzymes. After that, what should I do with the glucose 1-phosphate? Well, if you are in the land of abundance, you can save it for a rainy day, for later. Store it as glycogen, which is a very big sugar. But if you need energy right now, the glucose 1-phosphate can become glucose 6-phosphate, and then you can go to glycolysis to give you ATP, which is energy. You can use it for the now or save it for the morrow. Now let's talk about diseases. Some people lack this lactase enzyme, and this is called primary lactose intolerance. What if I have another disease that affected my lactase or affected my ability to digest and utilize lactose? Then we call it secondary lactose intolerance or secondary lactase deficiency. Can you give me an example of something secondary? Sure. 
Where does the lactase enzyme live? In the brush border of the enterocytes of my small intestine. So any disease that hits this area can affect my lactase. Or let's say that I removed part of my bowel surgically. What's going to happen? Lactase deficiency. And this will be secondary because I was not born with it because it has a known cause. Next, some people are born without galactokinase, giving me mild galactosemia, aka galactokinase deficiency. This is less severe than the coming one, which is severe or classic galactosemia, where the deficiency is in the galactose 1-phosphateuridyl transferase. Why is this more severe than this? That's a good question. In this disease, the mild one, the deficiency is here. Therefore, who's going to accumulate and pile up in my body? Only galactose, which is bad. But look at this one. When I lack this enzyme, who's going to pile up? Galactose will pile up and galactose 1-phosphate will pile up. This is more evil than this. Why? Because this is phosphorylated, i.e. it is trapped inside the cell. It cannot exit. The door can open to galactose, but the door of the cell will not open to galactose 1-phosphate. It will be trapped inside the cell, such as the cells in my liver, the cells in my brain, the cells in my lens of the eye. That's why galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase deficiency is more evil than the mild galactokinase deficiency. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Whether I'm missing this enzyme, this enzyme, or this enzyme, what's piling up in my body is sugar. Sugar is osmotically active, especially if you talk about galactitol, the sugar alcohol. It's gonna attract water, giving me cataract. And since galactitol comes from galactose, you can see cataracts in this disease, in this disease, but rarely with this disease. That's very unlikely. If you want to learn more about lactose intolerance, check out my previous video in this clinical biochemistry playlist. Now let's talk about severe or classic galactosemia. Let's look at the contraindications to breastfeeding. If you look at all the contraindications for breastfeeding, all of them are on the maternal side. If the mother has active tuberculosis, if the mother has an active herpes lesion on her breast, if the mother has HIV AIDS, etc., etc., all of these are maternal factors. The only fetal cause that makes breastfeeding contraindicated is galactosemia in the baby. Why? Because mommy's milk, like any milk, has lactose, and this baby cannot digest lactose. Now, let me tell you something that will blow your mind, metaphorically speaking. Why do patients with severe galactosemia are vulnerable to E. coli sepsis. Why sepsis? And why specifically E. coli? Let me tell you. Why sepsis is easy? Because when this is not working, what's going to happen? Sugar is piling up. Who loves sugar? Bacteria. Especially when that sugar is trapped in you. And when that sugar is trapped in your cells, like your immune cells, like your bone marrow cells, do you think your immunity is strong? No. So that's why you get sepsis. But why do you get E. coli sepsis? Easy. Don't forget that E. coli is a lactose fermenter. It gave us pink colonies on McConkie agar. The bacteria can ferment lactose. And if you have severe classic galactosemia, you have tons of sugar in your blood. A sugar that can be fermented and utilized for the E. coli's own sake. That's why these children are vulnerable to E. coli sepsis a fact that every pediatrician should know so that your threshold of suspicion of sepsis in these children has to be lower than their non-galactosemic counterparts. What is peptic ulcer disease? What are the medications that can help patients with peptic ulcer disease? How can we target the proton pump? What is the proton pump? What are the H2 blockers? Why are proton pumps stronger than H2 blockers? What are the asthma medications? How about serotonin pharmacology? Histamine pharmacology? You can learn about all of this by downloading my Utacoids pharmacology course at Medicare com to learn about the different types of insulin and how you can calculate the dose needed for a diabetic patient download my endocrine pharmacology course if you do not want to download my premium courses and would rather watch them right here on youtube click the join button and choose the highest tier please subscribe hit the bell support the channel here or here go to my website to download my courses notes and cases be safe stay happy study hard this is medicosis perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.